I'm Mrs. Vasquez Markley, and I'm the principal of Ross Elementary School. Today, I'm gonna read a book called, Hey Lil D, It's All in the Name. This book was co-authored by Bob Lanier, who was an NBA player, and Heather Goodyear. When he was a child, Bob Lanier's nickname was Lil D. This book is about him and his friend who wants to have a nickname just like Lil D. Do you have any friends with a nickname? Let's read this story to see what happens. Hey Lil D, it's all in the name by Bob Lanier and Heather Goodyear. Illustrated by Desiree Grover. Chapter one, waiting. Little Dauber was sitting with his back slouched against the wall in the narrow hall outside the bathroom door. The first day of the new school year and he was stuck waiting. Geraldine, his sister, was in the bathroom. Little Dauber knocked on the door but got no answer. I'll probably do a lot of waiting today, he thought. First, he would get into his new class and wait for the teacher to call out the name of every student. She would, of course, say his name, his real name, Bob Lanier, and not his nickname, Little Dauber. Then he would have to wait while his teacher went over all of the classroom and school rules. Lil Dauber could hear his mom across the house getting pans out in the kitchen. He reached his arm around again and knocked on the bathroom door, calling out his sister's nickname loudly. Geraldine, come on, he urged his sister, hurry up. What, Geraldine's voice came from behind the door. I told you, wait five minutes ago. Hurry up, said little Dauber. I had to wait too, you know, for mom and Dit. Geraldine answered, Dit was the nickname for their dad. Dit was out of here an hour ago and you weren't waiting because you weren't even up yet. Geraldine cracked the bathroom door enough to stick out her ebony face and stare down at little Dauber. Look, you better stop bugging me. You're not the only one who starts school today. It's my first day of middle school. So unlike you, I have to look good. The crack in the door closed. Come on, Jardine, Lil Dabra said to the once again closed door. Doesn't starting fourth grade count for something? Um, not that much, but I'll be out in two minutes if you stop talking to me. Lil Dauber stood up and went back to his room. No reason to keep sitting on the floor for what seemed to be another 10 minutes at least. Besides, he wouldn't tell Geraldine that he was up early anyways. He had, he had a little bit nervous, little bit disappointed, little bit excited, first day of school feelings in his stomach. He'd give Geraldine a break today, but he wasn't going to be shut out of the bathroom every morning. The Lanier's three-bedroom brick house all of a sudden filled with the smell of pancakes. Little Dauber's stomach started to growl. He wished Geraldine would hurry so he could at least brush his teeth and get to the kitchen to eat. He flopped backwards onto his bed and looked around his room. The plain white walls were decorated with basketball stuff that he had found, made, or had been given as a gift. He had drawn basketball jerseys on paper and hung up the numbers of some of his favorite NBA players. Someday, he thought, I'm going to be as a famous basketball player and hang my own jersey on the wall. Lil Dauber heard the bathroom door click. He jumped up took three running steps and slid behind Geraldine into the bathroom while she was still standing in the doorway. He closed the door quick so she couldn't change her mind. In the kitchen 10 minutes later, Lil Dauber's mom gave him a hug good morning. I have to leave for crossing guard duty in 15 minutes, she said. Sit down so we can eat and talk before I go. Lil Dauber's mom loved to cook and she was good at it. Almost every occasion was a reason to cook. 
including the first morning of a new school year. Pancakes, warm syrup, and fresh orange juice. So far, not a bad start to the first day of school. Lil Dauber thought, Jerry, do you have your class schedule? Yes, Mom, Geraldine asked, answered. And Bobby, you remember you're, you're in room 333 with Miss Wilson, right? Yes, Joe, Joe is too, Lil Dauber answered between bites of pancakes. He was glad that he was in the same class as Joe because the two friends hadn't seen much of each other in the last month. Joe and his twin sister Sam had gone to spend three weeks in Philadelphia with their dad. Then Lil Dauber had spent a week in Tennessee at his grandma's. Isn't that nice for you and Joe? Miss Lanier said. Now, you pay attention in class though and tell Miss Wilson I said hello. I didn't get to holler at her during church last week since we were in Tennessee. I will, but maybe it would be better if you didn't know my teacher so well, Mom. As long as you do as well in class, it shouldn't worry you whether your teacher and I are friends or not. Jerry Ann enjoyed having her, and you will too. Now, I have to get to work, Mrs. Lanier said, grabbing her stop sign. You all put your dishes in the sink and get your lunches and backpacks. And don't forget to make sure the door is locked when you leave. We won't, Lil Dauber and Geraldine said at the same time. Jerry, I'll see you this afternoon. Bobby, I'll see you at the crossing. Mrs. Lanier patted her hair down and waved goodbye as she hurried out the door. Lil Dauber watched his mom leave. He didn't know if he was more nervous than excited or more excited than nervous. But those first day of school feelings were hitting his stomach hard again. Chapter two, Goodbye Summer. Lil Dauber walked down the sidewalk, bouncing his basketball. Geraldine turned left on her way to middle school and he headed right to public school 17. All around Lil Dauber was was the hubbub of busy Buffalo, New York. But he walked slowly, waiting to see his buddy Joe coming over from Brunswick Avenue. They always walked to school together, and this year would be no different. At the corner ahead, little Dauber saw the sun flash off Joe's and Sam's reddish blonde heads as they appeared. Joe turned to look and held a hand up. Hello, when he saw little Dauber coming. Sam waved as she and a friend went on ahead to school. What's up? asked little Dauber when he caught up to Joe. Hey, little D, Joe greeted him. You ready for school? I guess. It's cool that we're in the same class. Yeah, so is the new kid named Gone. I met him while we were gone. He lives right down the street from you. Gone? asked Little Dauber. You mean like gone? As in he's gone? What kind of name is that? He's Chinese, Joe said. I told him about you. He said he'd play basketball with us at lunch. That's cool, right? Yeah, he can play with us, Little Dauber said, thumping the basketball with his fingertips. Cool. How was Tennessee? Joe asked. Great. I went fishing with my uncle Houston. We caught some really big catfish. How many, asked Joe. Me, only four or five. My uncle Houston caught a lot though. Did you stay at your grandma's? Yeah, at Big Mama's. I helped her a lot in her garden. We picked vegetables and she used them to cook for us. It was good. How was Philly? Cool. My dad took us to see the Liberty Bell and Betsy Ross's house. All that stuff we learned about in school last year. How's your dad doing? Asked little Dauber. Okay. He's got a little house now and we all played ball in the driveway. That's cool, little Dauber said. 
Yeah, Mom said she really missed us while we were gone, though, said Joe. Little Dauber and Joe talked and walked a few more blocks on the busy main drag of Northland Avenue. They passed houses of kids they knew, the neighborhood grocery store, and the boys and girls clubs. More and more kids walked along the sidewalk as they got closer to school. Little Dauber and Joe greeted and joked with classmates they hadn't seen all summer. Little Dauber took note that he was still a good half foot taller than all of them. Suddenly, Joe nudged Little Dauber in the ribs and made him bobble his basketball. Brooks is heading this way, said Joe, nodding across the street. Little Dauber knew what was coming. He looked up and saw Brooks walking with his three sidekicks in tow. Hey, Feet, said Brooks as he approached Little Dauber. What's up, Feet? His sidekicks all repeated. Quit calling me Feet, said Little Dauber. That's old and tired, man. Whatever, Feet, Brooks said. Man, I'd hate it if I had to lug those big sneakers around all the time. Brooks and his sidekicks laughed. Then they disappeared into the crowd because they were almost at the corner where Miss Lanier worked. Brooks talked big in front of other kids, but would never pick on Lil Dauber in front of his mom. He's lame, Lil Dauber said angrily to Joe, calling me that just because I have big feet. I don't call him mouth just because he's, he's got a big mouth. And his mouth is a lot more annoying than your feet, Joe added, sticking up for Lil Dauber. The boys reached the corner to cross before the school. Hey, Mom. Hi, Mrs. Lanier. Hi, Bobby, said his mom, turning from the groups of kids she had been talking to about their summer vacations. Nice to see you, Joe. Did you and Sam have a nice visit with your dad? Yeah, it was fun. Bobby sure wished you were here, Miss Lanier said, then looked at little Dauber. Did you and Jerry have any trouble getting off to school? His mom asked. None, he answered. Good, time to cross. Enough kids were waiting at the corner, so little Dauber's mom walked into the busy street when there was a break in the traffic. She raised her stop sign. Have a good day, she told all the kids moving through the crosswalk. Enjoy your first day, son, she said to Lil Dauber and squeezed his shoulder as he passed. Yes, ma'am, said Lil Dauber as he crossed the street to the front of the school. He walked toward the main doors and the first day of school feeling in his stomach was replaced with a goodbye to summer feeling. Little Dauber liked school because he was curious and enjoyed learning, but he really lived for recess and the hours between the end of school and dinner time. That was when he got to play basketball and be with his friends. Little Dauber looked over other kids' heads as he walked through the school doors. He was excited about school, but he would miss playing hoops all day. So, he couldn't help walking a little slower as he and Joe started down the hall and went to find room 333. Chapter 3 Why Lil Dauber? The fourth grade classes at Public School 17 had made it through all the first morning back to school business and now had some time to themselves at lunch recess. Lil Dauber, Joe, and Gon jogged to the basketball hoop in the cement schoolyard. Lil Dauber had met Gon in the lunchroom and they all ate lunch together. He thought right away they would be friends. As they got to the court, Gon yelled, Hey, Lil D, where'd you get your name? Why do people call you Lil Dauber? It's like this, Lil Dauber yelled back to be heard over the noise of the other kids and the traffic along the street. My dad was a really great basketball player when he was a kid. He holds a bunch of records. Everyone who went to Bennett High School knows about him. 
Yeah, my dad does, said Joe. His Friday night games were packed because his team was the best in Buffalo. He could really fill it up, Lil Dauber continued. My dad went to watch those games, Joe added in. Anyway, they all called him Big Dauber. My family started calling me Little Dauber because I went, I want to be just like my dad. And the nickname stuck. Gon tossed a shot towards the basket and said, I should have a nickname too. Every time I watch a basketball game on TV, all the stars have catchy nicknames. I'm just gone. If I'm going to be a star, I need a new name. You're going you're gonna to be a basketball star, Lil Dauber grinned as he looked at Gon, who only came up to his shoulder. Yeah. I'll be a guard, Gon said, nodding, and all the great guards have nicknames. You guys can think about it for a while and come up with a good one. Nice shot, Lil D, Joe called as he caught the ball falling through the hoop. Joe spun, dribbled once, shot the ball back up, and threw the hoop. Gon took it and dribbled to the free throw line to shoot. What can you call me, he asked as he set up his shot. It doesn't even have to do with basketball, I guess. I do other stuff too. Well, we sure can't call you ace, joked Joe. You said you usually get C's on tests. Yeah, you gave three wrong answers during the mass speed drill this morning, Lil Dauber joined in. As Joe and Lil Dauber laughed, Joe teased, you didn't know 12 times 2 was 42? Even I know 12 times 2 is 24, chimed in Sam, Joe's twin sister, as she ran up to meet them. You didn't start without me, did you? She questioned with her hands on her hips. She hated that they left her out of things sometimes. They did let her play basketball with them, though. She could hold her own against them up and down the court. The fact that she played sports with the boys also made her one of their friends, even if she was Joe's sister. Sam, you remember Gon from last week, right? Asked Joe. Gon and Sam said, hey, as they nodded to each other. Let's divide up, said Joe, anxious to play. Little Dauber and Sam, and I'll play with Gon. You guys get the ball first. In the schoolyard, there was room for only one basket and a painted key. Because they played every day, it was understood that Little Dauber and his friends got the hoop during recesses. Sometimes other kids joined them. But since it was such a small area, it was usually just them on the court. Gone was a nickname, Little Dauber told Sam as she took the ball to the top of the key. Like my name's Samantha, but I get called Sam? No, Gon answered. I want a nickname tells, that tells something I do. What about double dribble? I saw you shooting as I ran over here and you seemed to do that well, Sam said teasingly. Very funny, Gon said. No, I want to be clutch or something catchy like that. Enough talking and dribbling, cut in Joe. Let's play. Joe lunged at Sam. She cut left and dribbled past. They got down to the business of playing basketball with the time they had left. Gon was still daydreaming about nicknames and he missed three passes and four shots. Joe was on today though and without much help from Gon, they still beat Little Dauber and Sam by four points. The recess whistle blew at the last of Joe's shots went up and in, despite a block from Sam. Little Dauber grabbed the basketball and they joined the rush of kids crowding around the propped open metal door and an afternoon of classes. Well, that's all the time we have for today. I hope you all enjoyed reading with me. Now you can finish reading the book on your own to see if Gon gets his nickname. 
I want to take to the time to thank the Lancaster Education Foundation's donors who gave the money so they can buy these books for you. Don't forget to write your name in the book plate on the inside cover of your front book. Enjoy reading, second graders. Thank you.